Cardinals sign an offensive lineman. Uh, Cliff Kingsbury definitely leaves something to be desired. I'll unpack it. And do the Cardinals need to double up by signing a veteran and drafting that same position at 23 overall? All that and more on this episode of Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked on Cardinals. Your daily Arizona Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Get on in here, Locked On Cardinals. Alex Clancy here. Follow me on Twitter at Clancy's Corner. Follow the podcast at Locked On AZ Cards. Thank you to everybody who makes Locked On Cardinals your first listen each and every day. You can also check me out Thursdays on the Locked On NFL show. There's still some stuff to talk about here that, you know, I, I, I teased that I would talk Kyler Murray yesterday, and I will to some extent, tying in with Cliff Kingsbury and my thoughts on his press conference answers. I know that it sounds dumb and I know that it sounds like it's nitpicking, but I've been there in the press conferences. I've seen what he said after wins and after losses, and I'm not impressed. And again, this is not a negative thought. And I feel like I'm going to have to qualify that a lot throughout our experiences together over the next, you know, handful of months going into OTAs and into the season. And I'll, I'll explain what I mean in the second segment. Plus, there's a lot of free agents left out there that the Cardinals could definitely use. And most of them are at somewhat of an advanced age. So the sticker price wouldn't necessarily be as much as it would have been for all of those players a couple of years ago. Should the Cardinals bring in a player and draft that same position at 23 overall? I'll discuss it. First off, Will Hernandez comes over from the New York Giants to join his college coach, Sean Kugler, and seemingly play right guard for the Arizona Cardinals for the 2022 season. He hasn't rated higher than, I believe, just over 60 in pro football focus ratings. Take that as you wish. Uh, what what does this do for the Arizona Cardinals offensive line? One, it rids the Cardinals from Max Garcia, who went and signed elsewhere. Uh, Max Garcia got somewhat of a bad rap last year because he's not a traditional center, and he was playing center when Rodney Hudson was out. Um, I think this is a nice little step forward. I think it's more lateral than anything. Uh, A one-year deal, so the Cardinals aren't really tied to it. You're hoping that Steve Kime has found their next Kelvin Beecham, even though, you know, Will Hernandez didn't play fantastically with the Giants. His quarterback also was subpar in Daniel Jones. The offense was putrid there. Daniel Jones is not Kyler Murray. And I've said since they drafted Kyler Murray that the best offensive lineman the Arizona Cardinals have is Kyler Murray's legs. Now, Kyler Murray is a work in progress. I'll talk about it in the second segment. For the specific reason of him not stepping up in the pocket as much as he should at this point. There's a lot of stills out there, a lot of videos where the where the tackles are blocking properly, giving him this cocoon inside the pocket, and Kyler still finds a way to either get sacked or not complete a pass. I'll talk about that in the second segment. But the Will Hernandez thing, you know, cool. He, he made waves at the combine for benching, I think it was 37 times. Uh, 220. Cool. Uh, He's got short arms. Uh, Okay. Um, What does this do? What this does is have the Cardinals not take a step backwards. And I said during the middle of last offseason, any step not backwards is a step forward. And it sounds a little counterintuitive. It sounds, um, you know, dumb, I guess. But with how fragile the Cardinals roster is right now, not signing somebody to a four-year $60 million deal with $40 million guaranteed who's injury prone or something like that on the offensive line, it's a win. There's really no risk taken here with it being a one-year deal. Um, But I still think the Cardinals need to draft an offensive lineman at 23 overall. I said that since the mock drafts first started coming out, Zion Johnson is the apple of my eye. Interior offensive line uh, alignment, absolute mauler, which will bolster the left side of the offensive line with Rodney Hudson and DJ Humphreys as bookends. But the Cardinals do make a signing. Fine. Um, it's not a world beater. And the less you have to talk about the offensive line, the better the offensive line is doing. Uh, the offensive line is still the unsung heroes 
of the NFL. At least they're getting paid a little bit better than they used to a decade ago. But I think this was more about Sean Kugler bringing in a guy that he knew. And, you know, at, at Texas El Paso, um, he knows him. This is the this is Sean Kugler's show, the offensive line. And he has somebody now that he trusts on the right side. What does this say about Josh Jones? That's the bigger question here. I know that Josh Jones is a tackle, okay? I know that they've been playing him at right guard and moving him around the line where injuries, you know, force them to play him. There's a couple things that we know about the players that have been drafted over the last two years by the Arizona Cardinals. Zayvon Collins, Josh Jones, namely Isaiah Simmons' his rookie year. They weren't ready to play. They weren't ready to play. And you can take the approach that this is on Vance Joseph not wanting to play rookies for Zayvon Collins and Isaiah Simmons. I don't think that's it. I think you have to play the best player. And Jordan Hicks was the best player last year. And Jordan Hicks was the best player the year before. And Josh Jones isn't ready to supplant Kelvin Beecham as the right tackle of the Arizona Cardinals. So I understand playing youth and all that stuff. I I, I get it because in a perfect world, absolutely, you draft guys and then they're ready to play. And then you have stars who run rookie scale contracts and you don't have to rely on aging veterans to play those positions. And also, that's not the case with the Arizona Cardinals because the players that were drafted in the first round two years uh, back-to-back and then Josh Jones in the third round were not ready to play, so they were not playing. And this solidifies the fact that Josh Jones is not ready to play yet. Now, that may mean that he's just, you know, playing guard is not his natural position and playing tackle would be, but DJ Humphreys and Kelvin Beecham are better at what they do than Josh Jones is. That's not to say that he can't have a breakout year this year. That's not to say that he can't kind of mold himself into a Swiss Army knife and play backup right guard if Will Hernandez, you know, tends to miss time, even though he's played full seasons in three of his four seasons in the NFL. We'll see what happens with Josh Jones. But what we do know is when Max Williams went out last year and was unable to help blocking on the right side, Josh Jones struggled. Josh Jones went from having a great pass blocking uh, uh, rate to a bad one pretty quickly. And what at least I think is just because you draft players and just because Josh Jones had a first round grade and there were rumors that the Cardinals were going to trade back from the position they were in to 17 or 18 to draft Josh Jones in the first round. That doesn't matter. If you're not an NFL caliber player that can be trusted on the right side of the line, you're not going to play. And we're seeing that that seems to be more possible than Josh Jones just not getting a chance. Alex Lancey, uh, oh, wow, that's not going to happen again. Alex Lancey locked on Cardinals. Uh, Listen, I've been doing it for four years. It's going to happen once. Um, Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, You know, I love doing this podcast. I'm going to be doing it on my own. Thank you for people that are reaching out, asking to co-host with me. It's great. Keep listening. There's going to be some great things happening. Coming up, Cliff Kingsbury leaves a lot to be desired. And this is not an off-season topic. This is a microcosm of what I think Cliff Kingsbury to be. I'll talk about that next. Locked on Cardinals, betonline.net. I mean... It sucks that we've only got three more college basketball games this year. It sucks. But for those three college basketball games, betonline.net is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info from all the latest odds, contests, and player props. You name it. Everything. BetOnline.net's got you covered. They remain the best spot for all your latest sports development, including podcasts and reviews for all the leagues this season. And it's not just basketball. Bas- uh, Bet online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games. Head to the website or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online, where the game starts. Thank you, thank you, thank you for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day. Make sure you're following Locked On NFL. It's Locked On experts covering the biggest sports stories around the NFL every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes, free and available wherever you get your podcast. You can check me out, your boy, on Thursday. I love doing that show. I love it. You get to talk about all the sports. And sometimes the Cardinals intertwine. Not always. Cliff Kingsbury spoke to the media. Um, 
and pretty much status quo, Cliff Kingsbury, ho-hum, boring. Uh, I love Kyler, and I'm not going to get into the business side of things, and blah, blah, blah. Okay, this is not picking on Cliff Kingsbury. This is exposing something that gets overlooked a lot because – most coaches do this, but the great ones don't. And you know what? If you want to compare Cliff Kingsbury's press conferences to Bill Belichick's conference, press conferences, look at the rings, baby. Just, you cannot compare Cliff Kingsbury to Bill Belichick in any way, aside from maybe what their favorite food was to eat when Cliff Kingsbury was in Foxborough backing up, Kyler, uh, backing up Tom Brady 15 years ago. You can't compare the two. So push it with that. All right. What Cliff Kingsbury continues to show, in my opinion, is that he doesn't have bravado when speaking at all. He doesn't stand for anything. And sure, there's politics being a head coach. Absolutely. Ask Mike Tomlin and John Harbaugh how they talk. And ask Cliff Kingsbury about his thoughts after games, before games, in press conferences, when they lose. Every question is answered with, I got to watch a tape. Ah, you know, I got to watch a tape. You know, we got to do better with that. We've got to do better with that. Uh, yeah, that's something we're going to have to work on. It's just, it's nothing. It's nothingness. You don't get anything from him. And this isn't like, oh, he's a steel trap. What is he thinking next? No. This is... A, this is it's like somebody he's like a he talks like a librarian where it's like listen we're gonna figure it out everything's fine you know there's two students fighting downstairs over a book it's like listen we're gonna work this out let's go to the tape we got the camera let's go to it let's work on this for the future and then nothing gets fixed when he talks about his guy kyler murray he's talking about him like he talked about Josh Rosen before the 2019 season started. He's our guy. That's what he says. That's what he says about Kyler Murray. Regardless of their history, he does say, you know, Kyler's taking leaps and he's moving forward and, and all of these things. I don't, I don't believe that he believes the things that he says. I feel like he's a, like a, a robot with a six pack. Who doesn't wear socks? I don't get the no socks thing, first of all. I don't get, like, I know it's cool. I think I'm just not cool enough to understand it. Like, loafers with no socks, I don't get it. I don't care how posh your place is. Put some socks on. Be an adult. So he spoke about Kyler, you know, and it's, I'm not, you know, we're not going to talk about the contract stuff. That's the business. I stay out of that. Go to bat for your guy. Like, I, I don't, especially because they share the same agent. It's like, well, people can make the argument, well, they share the same agent, so they're going to be together. Well, they share the same agent, so blah, 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 blah. They use it for both sides of this. And I don't understand why Cliff is so hesitant to put his foot in the ground about anything. It's like he's given a script of what to say and what not to say. It started during the introductory press conference. I'm going to defer everything to Steve Kahn. You know, it's, and I don't think that's being too harsh. I think that's just acknowledging what we're watching. So now, okay, on the other side, what is he supposed to say? What he's saying and more. You need to be a little bit more open. Like the fact that the Cardinals are Fort Knox after what happened at the end of last year baffles me. It baffles me. Doesn't it baffle you that there's no accountability? I was worried when the Cardinals were 10 and 2 and you started to see an incremental downfall, an incremental decline, that they were drinking the happy to be here juice. Everybody was getting contract extensions in line. Everybody, oh man, 10 and 2, number one seed, number one in the power rankings. We did it. And this is where we are now. We're going into this offseason, watching the Cardinals go into this offseason like they were last offseason with less urgency. What I want from the Arizona Cardinals head coach, who has, yes, 
improve this team 2019, 2020, and 2021. I do not give him credit from the 2018 to 2019 because the roster is completely different. If he was given the 2018 roster, he would have been a one and done also. Let's not get that part twisted. But sure, they won 11 games. He's the head coach. He gets credit. Absolutely. And there were times where he was masterful. I tweeted out, I tweeted that out after a game early on in the season. What he did at times was masterful. For those Entourage fans out there, I use this analogy a lot. If you've seen Entourage, you know what I'm about to say. The movie Medellin that was made in the trailer looked fantastic, and the movie was dog poop. Cliff Kingsbury's trailer, if you're going to put together play calling and put it and you mash it up, it looks like the movie's going to win an Oscar. And then you watch the full movie. Hmm. Oh, man, I wish I, you know, I thought the movie was going to be great, but I all the great stuff was in the trailer. You said that before? Yeah, that's what Cliff Kingsbury is a lot of the time. Now, that's not to say that he hasn't taken leaps. I don't think patience should be given as much as others do. Three years is plenty. And what we've seen from the press conferences to the interviews to the on-the-field stuff is Cliff Kingsbury has not changed at all. Better, worse, maybe he doesn't need to change, maybe I'm wrong. But what I do know is the Cardinals had epic collapses. Epic, loosely defined in 2020, an epic collapse last year. And it's not all on the players. It's not all on DeAndre Hopkins being out. DeAndre Hopkins, this isn't the first time that a wide receiver has gone down. It's not. Needs to be schemed for. Needs the, the, the game plan needs to be thrown out the window. And a new one needs to be constructed. And it wasn't. And the Cardinals faltered. And ended the 2021 season in embarrassing fashion. So I'm not saying that what Cliff Kingsbury says behind a microphone directly correlates to what happens on the field. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is it's all part of the Cliff Kingsbury spectrum. The spectrum of players coach to coolest dude in the room to not being able to adjust, to not being able to deal with adversity. It just shuts it down. And we saw it on the field. You lose to the Detroit Lions. Something's wrong. Alex Clancy here, locked on Cardinals. I and the reason why the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because Kyler Murray should he should be Kyler Murray's biggest advocate. 100 percent his biggest advocate. Aside from Kyler's parents and our boy Stephen Bach, a friend of the podcast. He should be Kyler Murray's biggest advocate. You know why? Because Cliff, because Kyler Murray got Cliff Kingsbury this job. They've known each other forever. Why Cliff Kingsbury doesn't want to go out of bounds just a little bit to back up his guy baffles me. And if you think that 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 what he says in the media, yeah, Kyler's our guy. Oh, you know, I I, I love Kyler. You know what? Grab that microphone, scream into it, saying Kyler Murray's not going anywhere. One time for me. Show some emotion. Please. Coming up next, the Cardinals still have a bunch of holes to fill. Corner, edge rusher, wide receiver, running back, offensive line, defensive line. Should they sign as big of a time free agent as they can and draft that same position at 23 overall? I'll talk about it next. First, rockauto.com. I love rockauto.com. Um, it gets more and more confusing to know about cars. I don't. I didn't get that gene. I, I didn't get the gene. Um, and you know, rockauto.com helps me while not having that gene. There is increasing numbers of makes and models. It's impossible for your local chain auto parts store to keep everything you need in stock. So even if you go down there and you know the part that you need by some miracle, I don't. I would have to Google it. Um, there's a, there's a chance that it might not be on the shelves. And if it is on the shelves, there's a chance it could be upcharged 30, 40, even 50% to keep it on the shelves. Rockauto.com, you don't have to worry about that. You go to rockauto.com, you can go in your jammies, man. 
just sit down on the couch, go to rockauto.com, type in what you need, tail lamps, paint, carpet, whatever, paint, make and model, order, bing bong, it's right at your doorstep a couple days later. That's what rockauto.com does. Their prices are reliably low. They, they're a family-owned business. They've been online for 20 years. They treat you like family, man. Been online for 20 years. 20 years. So let's go over that quickly. You don't have to leave your place. You don't have to ask awkward questions. RockAuto.com doesn't upcharge you. They've got things in stock, and it gets delivered to your door. Seems like a win-win to me. Go to RockAuto.com, right? Locked on in there. How did you hear about us, Box? So they know we sent you. Amazing selection. Reliably low prices. All the parts your car will ever need. RockAuto.com. Thank you for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day. Free and available on all platforms. Truly thank you. Locked On Cardinals 2.0 is in full swing. I know in some of the comments, you know, people are saying oh, it's weird without, you know, a co-host. Shouldn't be. Um, there's a promise that I made to you yesterday when I reintroduced myself. Um, I'm going to be fair, but if toughness is necessary, it's going to be there. Just because something has a negative hue to it doesn't mean it doesn't need to be said. It doesn't mean that it's not true, and it doesn't mean that it's unfair. Just wanted to leave you with that. The Cardinals have several holes on this roster. Several. I think several is uh, being nice, edge rusher, uh, you know, edge rusher, wide receiver, inside, uh, interior defensive line, running back, you know, everything. So the question is, do the Cardinals need to sign an impact player and draft that same position to 23? Because what we've talked about, what I've talked about over the last handful of years is the Arizona Cardinals need to have as many strengths on this roster as possible. And when you have a strength, you have inherent depth at that position. So what the Cardinals faltered last year regarding was once a player went out, that was it. Once DeAndre Hopkins went out, that was it. Now, sure, DeHop is a top three receiver in the league. Okay, so when he goes down, obviously filling that void is going to be more difficult. But say, you know, when Chase Edmonds went down or um, uh, James Conner went down, they had depth there with Eno Benjamin. Like there was depth and sure Kyler Murray helps with his legs as well. That was one of the deeper positions that the Cardinals had on the roster. Safety, 2020, Buda Baker went down. Um, he was out for a game in Carolina. Jalen Thompson missed a couple games, but they had Chris Banjo. They had some guys that could have at least some sort of depth with experience when players went out. Last year, corner, nope. Last year, wide receiver, absolutely not. Last year, offensive line, absolutely not. Now, losing Rodney Hudson, who's an all-pro center, again, that's pretty much, you know, you can tie that in with DeAndre Hopkins because Rodney Hudson was probably the best offseason acquisition last year. Uh, when he was out, it was it was shown. Max Garcia had trouble hiking the ball to Kyler Murray. So it begs the question. You can do one of two things here, and the Cardinals do have draft picks in the first three rounds. Then they're a gaping hole in the fourth and fifth due to trades, et cetera, and then they have a cavalcade of picks in the sixth and seventh round. Does that mean that they may package a couple of the six-round picks to move to the fifth? Maybe, but as we're looking at right now, they have three picks in the first three rounds, and there's two different ways to look at it, as I mentioned. One, you find a strength, okay? You find a strength. Whether it be, you know, you you, you bring in Stephon Gilmore, okay, then you draft the corner at 23. You brought in Will Hernandez. You brought back Justin Pugh. You sign. You draft Zion Johnson at 23 overall. That would be a strength for the offensive line. Okay. Do you bring in a wide receiver? Do you bring in Odo Beckham? Probably not. But do you bring in an Odo Beckham and then draft a wide receiver at 23 overall? I think that would be the worst of all the options. I know it's the most fun. I know drafting a wide receiver at 23 overall would be fantastic because you have a guy that's going to be good more than likely. And he's going to be your baby. He's going to be the, 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 you know, the little brother who's going to perform for the next handful of years on a rookie scale contract. I get that that would be the most fun. And if the Cardinals had taken care of business over the last couple of years through the draft, 
that would have 100% been possible. But because they haven't eaten their vegetables yet, they still need to eat their vegetables before they can have dessert. And that's why we are where we are. I hope that makes sense. Because, yes, Kyler Murray needs weapons. 100%. I get that. I understand and I agree. And if Kyler Murray's not protected, it doesn't matter the wide receivers that he's throwing to. Joe Burrow miraculously was sacked eight or nine times in a playoff game and still won. Yeah, that's great. Absolutely. Look at the rest of that roster offensively without Jamar Chase. Joe Mixon, CJ Uzoma, T Higgins, Tyler Boyd. That is a top 15 skill position group without Jamar Chase. That's not what the Cardinals have. Okay. So what the Bengals decided to do was go strength and they had their strength was their offensive skill position players. That's why they drafted Jamar Chase. Obviously, he played at LSU with Joe Burrow. That helped. But the Cardinals, if they were to draft a wide receiver at 23, that still wouldn't be the strength of the offense. And it wouldn't add any sort of depth whatsoever. Because Christian Kirk is gone. Rondo Moore is unproven. And Antoine Wesley, people think Antoine Wesley is going to be this guy who's going to be a savior. Who And it, that hasn't happened in the NFL. Like, just because we can name players on the roster doesn't mean they're going to be effective. And if you have to rely on a guy like Antoine Wesley, the Cardinals are going to be in trouble. So the question to lead this segment was, do the Cardinals need to draft, sign a free agent and draft one from the same position at 23 overall? I think the answer is yes, and I think it's going to be very tricky. So maybe they signed Will Hernandez as a depth guy. So they've got some dudes now. If they want to draft Zion Johnson, who knows if he's going to be there at 23. I think that I would still sign up for that. Now, if they want to bring in, you know, a guy like Bobby Wagner and then draft an edge rusher, I know it's not the same. I know Bobby Wagner, you know, would have to shift a little bit on the defensive side with the scheme that they have. I would be on board for that because what does an edge rusher do? It makes, a, you know, a, a, a good edge rusher do. It makes the corner's jobs easier because they have to cover for less time. And we saw that during the first half of last season. Clint, I'm sure that Steve Kime has a plan, okay? But the truth of what we're experiencing right now is the Cardinals have more question marks than answers on their roster. Opposing teams really only have to scheme for five players, five starters for the Cardinals, maybe six. Kyler Murray, James Conner, Rodney Hudson, DeAndre Hopkins, Buda Baker. Who else? Who else do they absolutely have to scheme for? when setting up their offensive or defensive game plans respectively before they play the Cardinals. Who else? That's what needs to be fixed. Impact makers, day one, to bolster this roster, to catapult the Cardinals past a disappointing end to the 2021 season into the next part of the, the I don't know, the mesosphere. I was terrible at science. Into the next iteration of what the Cardinals winning organization is going to look like. And it's got to happen soon. Alex Clancy, Locked on Cardinals. Thanks for listening. Thank you for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day. Now make your second listen, Locked on NFL Draft. Ryan Tracy and former NFL cornerback Eric Crocker bring the NFL Draft to life every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front offices. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. Talk to you tomorrow.